Um, good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's good to have you all here today to introduce you to the uh, CAS program. And um, I'm excited uh, because today I'm going to focus my program in a more creative fashion than I normally do. And creativity is something that I, um, I, I like a lot and I'm involved in at times, but for the majority of what I do at school, it, I, I don't do a lot of the creative things that I have done in the past. But today I'm going to be sharing with you um, some things that uh, are going to help you to prepare for, for the IB CAS program and what you're going to do here next year. Um, I'm going to be having some students from grade 11 speak to you who uh, are going to help you have a better understanding of, of the CAS program and how you can be successful in the CAS program. And so I'm, I'm, I'll introduce them later. But first I want to tell you a funny story. This is fresh. This just happened. Okay, so I carry this blue bag to the bus stop. It's heavy, so I get on the bus and, you know, ride the bus to the MRT station, and I get to the MRT and carry the bus, the, the bag, all the way to the train, and I set it right when you walk in the door to the left, okay? So if this is the door, and you're outside and I'm inside, I'm standing here, and my bag is here. So I, I'm, I'm holding my backpack. And my backpack is feeling yeah. heavy. So I decide to take my backpack off. I take my backpack off and I put it on top of my bag. It's sitting just like this at the MRT station. When we get to, I think it was Little India, there's this lady sitting down and I noticed her as we were passing and then we stopped near her. So she came and she got on. And so she, she came and I'm standing here and she came, this is exactly what she did. She walked in, she looked at my bag right there, and she took, she turned around and she took her bag, took it off, and put it on top of my stuff. And I'm going, seriously? Now, any other day, I wouldn't have cared. But because today is cash day, and I'm going to be introducing to you the cash program, I wanted to show you a painting I painted <laughs> when I was an art student, or after I was an art student, maybe 20 years ago. And I keep this painting sitting on top of one of my bookshelves. I never even touch it. I, can't, I don't even display it where it can be seen in my house. She puts her bag and just doesn't even think anymore. I'm going, what's going on here? So, that was hilarious to me. <laughs> but thankfully, it didn't get... I want to start off my presentation today by sharing with you two poems. And um, the poems are by... Two people, I'm making my space here if you guys want to give me a little extra space. The poems are by two African American writers who were a part of a, a period in the history of the United States called the Harlem Renaissance. This is a period of time in the 1920s when there were many African Americans who developed in the arts and in writing and in music, jazz. And uh, it was just the hop in place for the intellectual, uh, probably you would call them the elite in the African American society in the United States. And Langston Hughes and James Weldon Johnson were two of the principal writers and poets of that period of time. So I'm going to share with you a couple of their poems, and they relate to what you're going to be doing today. The first one is by Langston Hughes. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore? 
and then run. Does it stink? Like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? Dreams. Mm -hmm. Langston Hughes no doubt dreamed of a time in the United States when African American people would have freedoms that all people in the United States had. He wrote a lot about dreams. Some people would refer to him as a dreamer. And today, I invite you to think like Langston Hughes as a dreamer. What would you like to have accomplished? What's a dream that you have that maybe in one year's time you could have accomplished something that maybe you hadn't thought you didn't think you could have accomplished before? We have Cynthia Lasante here. She's about to publish her second book. It's in the process of being printed, finalizing that. She may talk about that today. I have the poster of her book. She dreamed of writing and that dream has come true. What are your dreams today? What do you want to become? What do you want to do with your life? Do you have to wait until you're 25? Do you have to wait until you're 30? Do you have to wait until you're 43 to begin to pursue your dreams? Or can you pursue your dreams right now? Don't let your dream be deferred. We don't want any stinking rotten meat. We want dreams to blossom. Things that you want to do to come to pass. And you're going to hear stories of people today who have had dreams and have had successes in things that they have decided to do. And they're making a difference in the lives of other people. The next poem is entitled The Creation by James Weldon Johnson. And this poem um, there is not intended to um, be religious, but it is intended to be an expression of inflection and the creative process. <coughs> the Creation by James Wilton Johnson. And God stepped out on space. And he looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make me a world. And as far as the eyes of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights, down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke. And the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other. And God said, that's it. Then God took the light in his hands, and he rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun, and he set that sun ablazing in the heavens. And the light that was left over from making the sun, God gathered up in a shining ball and flung against the darkness, spangling the night with the moon and stars. Then, down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world. And God said, that's God. Then God himself stepped down. The sun was on his right hand. The moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head. And the earth was under his feet. And God walked. And where he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then God stopped and looked and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the sea and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes and the lightning flashed. He clapped his hands and the thunder rolled. And the waters from above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed its finger to the sky and the oak spread out its arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the seas. And a rainbow appeared and curled itself.
around his shoulders. Then God raised his arm and waved his hand over the seas and over the land. And God said, bring forth, bring forth. Man, quicker than God could drop his hand. Fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. God said, that's it. Then God walked around, and God looked around. On all that he had made, he looked at his moon, he looked at his sun, he looked at his little stars, he looked on his world with all its living things, and God said, I'm lonely, still. So God sat down by the edge of the river where he could think. By a deep, wide river, he sat down. With his head in his hands, God thought. Till he thought, I'll make me. A man! Up from the edge of the river, God scooped the clay. And by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there, the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the farmost corners of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his head. There, the great God Almighty, like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust till he shaped it in his own image. Then in it, he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. Creativity. What will you create this year? What will you create? What will you imagine? What will you allow to develop in your mind as something, Haman, that I designed this t-shirt, I designed this campaign to cause people to help orphans in Soxo Bay? I designed the conservation project that helped raise awareness of what zoos do. I designed the tiger conservation show, photography show. I designed the penguin for World Penguin Day. I wrote a play about human trafficking. Yes, I'm mentioning things that you have done. Some of you in this room, sitting beside you, there's people who have allowed creativity to express itself already. And next year, we want you to continue that creative process and to do even more and greater things through your creativity. And the CAS program is here to help you to facilitate that. I'm not going to talk about everything that is involved in the CAS program. But I just want to show you a couple of resources that you can use to help you understand how to do CAS and what is involved. I'm going to let the grade 11 students do most of the talking about CAS today. But I just wanted you to think about being creative, to think about dreaming. What are your dreams? What is it that you dream about? What is it that you could do if there was if there was nothing holding you back, what would you do? And you can start making steps towards that next year. So we're going to look at some CAS websites, and then I'm going to turn it over to Drew. <coughs> the CAS main website. So this is the main CAS website. And on it, scroll down please, you'll see that there's a place for the grade 11 and 12 students to write their wikis. Um, and we have a CAS blog. The purpose of the CAS blog, this was actually 
the brainchild of Win Yi Wei. He was a grade 12 student, and he, just, he was the first person to be a part of the CAST Leadership Council, which was a group of students that was started to cause the CAST programs to be sustained year after year. And so he said, Mr. Whitehead, why don't we have a page where the leaders of the CAS activities can post information to the students. It's public so that anybody in the world can see what we're doing. And so that is a, a neat page with a lot of different links on it. Um, that it, It's available for the CAS leaders to use if they want to. All right, let's go back to the YouTube page. Some people like to make videos in doing their CAS project. One of them is sitting with us today, Chris Jungle, and thank you to Chris for videoing today. He um, uh, helped with setting up the ISS CAS TV page, and we just post videos that we want to share with the world, let the world see what ISS is doing in CAS. And for those of you who like doing video, this is a great place um, for you to put videos. I'm, I'm going to have a tools video up there pretty soon when I get him to give me his video that he made of Ultimate Frisbee. All right, let's go to the creativity page. Now, this is a, I made this page this year after I, I had some students in grade 12 tell me that I didn't focus on creativity enough. And I, I agreed with them. Because when I came here, a few, when I started the CAS program, not started, but when I took over the CAS program, there were students who, when one of our students went to um, participate in Habitat for Humanity Singapore, of course, you know we don't build homes here. The government does that. But there were people who live in homes that aren't so nice. And there was a student here who went and helped clean up one of those homes for elderly people where there were bed bugs and needed painting and all that kind of stuff. And when they came back to school, some of their peers ridiculed them for doing, for helping people. Now, I know you guys probably think that's insane because there's a culture of service at our school now, and we're always willing, but it wasn't always like that. And so that's why I focused so heavily on service for the last few years. But now I think that now we have people who start their own service projects, people feel good about helping you clean up Depot Road, uh, and you felt good about that, and we do a lot of, so many different service activities. I'm gonna focus on the creativity side more next year. Let's show them the initiated activities page. And this is the thing that the grade 11 students are going to tell you is the most difficult. Initiating, planning and initiating your own activity. And I'll let them share about, about what you need to do for that. So um, these are just a few of the resources that we have. Um, what's the last one that we didn't do to the right of yeah, that? Manage back. Ah, manage back. You guys know manage back. You guys have been doing a lot of good reflections. Of course, you'll continue doing reflections on the Manage Back. So let me just distinguish between these three. Manage Back is private. Only teachers will read what you write, and probably not many, besides me, Mr. Leo, <laughs> or whoever your grade 11 homeroom advisor is. They'll read your, uh, your reflections. So you can put the personal stuff there, OK? Um, the, the CAS Wiki. <laughs> Your student wiki page is public to the school, so people outside of ISS cannot look at your wiki page. So there is some sense of privacy. Um, the CAS blog is completely public. So these are, you, some people say, why do you have so many different places to put CAS information? Well, yeah, I, I don't want anybody else looking at your reflections. I don't want your peers looking at your reflections, but that's personal. But I do want them to see pictures of the activities you do. I do want them to celebrate things that you do that are significant achievements. And there's some things that people outside of the ISS community need to see as well. And so we put those on the CAS blog. All right?